Hey guys, we are graphing some absolute value graphs today or equations, I should say. All right, so the cool thing about these is we like to reference what we call a parent graph, okay? So if you were just being asked to graph y equals the absolute value of x, that is what your graph would look like. But you're like, that's not what I'm being asked to graph. I'm being asked to graph something a little more complex, lady. So what we know is these two graphs are related to each other, okay? They're very similar to each other. And these numbers and things are going to tell me how to move this parent graph around to get this graph, okay? So to know that, we have, hold on, oh, it's a paper, here we go, okay. So this number out here tells me a couple things. It tells me if my graph opens up or down, the V, okay? So in this case, since it's a negative, the parent graph was positive, right? So it opened up. This one is negative, so it's going to open, you guessed it, guys, down, okay? That's what that negative tells me. What does that 2 tell me, okay? That tells me that my graph is going to be skinnier than the parent graph, you could say, okay? So you'll see the blue, that's my parent graph. You see the green has a 4 out front, and you see how it's stretched and skinnier? Now, if you have one with a fraction out front, check out the red graph and you'll see how it's compressed. Now, in ours, it's negative, so they're going to be flipped around, but you get the idea, right? So, I know that it is going to, I'm just going to write a note that says there's going to be a stretch, okay, to remind myself, all right? Now, these numbers here tell me where my graph shifts, okay? The number inside the absolute value bars tells me if left and right. The one outside, oh gosh, the one outside tells me up and down, okay? So this one, since it is a positive seven, we actually do opposite of the sign in this case. So you might think to the right seven, but we do opposite. So we're actually gonna go to the left seven, okay? And then that plus two on the back, we stick with the sign. So it tells me we are going to move it up two, okay? So let's go ahead and see what this looks like in action, okay? So my parent graph started at zero, zero, right? But this one, we're going to move to the left seven and up two. So that is my new vertex, okay? Now remember, it's negative, so it's gonna open down, okay? Now some teachers, they might just wanna know right now that you know where the new vertex is and you know it opens down and then some of them might have you write like, oh, there is a uh, vertical stretch by a factor of two or something. That might be what they want, okay? But to show that vertical stretch, we are going to plug in some points, okay? So I kind of want to know where this graph crosses the x-axis because we know it's going to open down, right? So it's going to cross the x-axis twice, okay? To figure out where it crosses the x-axis, I'm going to plug in zero for y, right? So I'm gonna have zero equals negative two, and then we've got the absolute value of x plus seven plus two, okay? So we want x alone, so I'm gonna subtract two from both sides. I have negative two equals negative two, absolute value of x plus seven, okay? And then I'm gonna divide that negative two off. Okay, so I end up with one equals the absolute value of x plus seven, okay? Now, if you need an absolute value review, I'll link a video for you in the corner, but absolute value is asking for a distance, right? So basically, I know that the absolute value of one, that's gonna look funny, <laughs> is one, right? Because one, is one unit away from zero, it's a distance. Also, the absolute value of negative one is one because negative one is a distance of one from zero. You can't have a negative distance, right? So basically what I know here is that this number inside of here, x plus seven, it could be equal to one and it could be equal to negative one. Oh, pretend I did that right. There we go, now it's right. It could be equal to negative one, okay? So now we're going to solve for x on both of these. So I get x equals negative six, and I get 
x equals negative 8. Okay, so when I plugged in 0 for y, I got negative 6 for x, and I also got negative 8 for x. Okay, so this is going to look a little something like this. We're going to graph these. It's going to look like that, and then we are going to draw our graph. Remember, it's going to be an upside down V, and these are straight lines. So do you see how that is skinnier than my parent graph was because of that number out front? Okay, hopefully this made sense. If you need some more videos with absolute value, I will link a playlist for you in the corner. Bye!